Hey there. Welcome to another episode of Mike's Collection. I'm Mike, and in this episode, the part of my collection that I'm going to be talking about is all of the new stuff I've acquired um, basically since the new year started. Um, I have showed you some of the other new figures I've bought, but usually it's been a full uh, like wave of figures. I did a video focusing on the, uh, the latest Spider-Man wave of Marvel Legends, um, the, as well as the Fantastic Four wave of Marvel Legends. I did a video recently about my newest wave of Mythic Legions figures. Um, and it's been over a month since I've done one of these kind of catch-all videos just to cover all the other little odds and ends that I've picked up over the last few weeks. So, uh, yeah, that's all this episode is going to be about. Just showing you my new stuff. Um, you know, I got some cool stuff. So, let's get right into it. So, here is Cosmic Ghost Rider inside of the packaging. So, you can see this is a deluxe Marvel Legends figure. So, you get the figure in there as well as the bike. There's some artwork on the side. And on the back, you get a picture of the action figure in action. As well as a little bio of the character. So here is Cosmic Ghost Rider outside of the packaging, displayed on his bike in all its glory. So, there was some assembly required to this thing when you first took it out of the box. Um, you had to put this kind of ball here together. It snapped onto this clear base, as well as one of these sets of uh, like exhaust pipes you had to snap on yourself. But you can see here, Ghost Rider fits in the seat nicely. Got a little spot to rest his uh, his feet on here. Uh, he can grip both of the handlebars. Another feature that's kind of neat is on each side of the seat, it's got those little uh, kind of holsters where you can stick his guns. So that's pretty cool. And this bike uh, looks pretty accurate to how it looks in the comic books. I don't know exactly how it works. It's got this big kind of energy globe that seems to help it soar through the skies so it's like it hovers along and yeah it looks pretty good now normally i don't go for vehicles like they've packaged like a wolverine and a captain america that came with a motorcycle i don't like being forced to buy vehicles i've never been much of a vehicle guy even back when i was a kid and, and had to buy vehicles to get certain gi joe figures but when it comes to ghost rider he seems a little lost without his bike so i don't mind uh, having to get this bike in order to get this figure, but I really did want this figure So here is Cosmic Ghost Rider We'll bring him up close so you can get a good look at his skull So it's got kind of like a translucent red skull there with some translucent yellow flames around it And it's all contained in this like uh, clear plastic dome uh, It looks pretty cool The armor is kind of strange and that it's got these kind of uh, kind of fluorescent almost paint speckles on it. Like it's got a, you see some pink speckles here and some blue speckles. It almost looks like an accident, like he was flecked with paint. Um, I actually don't necessarily remember that from the comic books, but I assume it's accurate. Otherwise, I don't know why they would have done that. Not too many colors on the back. It's pretty much straight silver. But yeah, a lot of nice details on the front of the figure, including the skull emblem here on his chest. And these kind of funky bracelets here on his wrists. And then these crazy spiky pads. Which are can be kind of sharp, but at the same time you see here, they're, they're relatively soft rubber. So hopefully nobody takes their eye out with those things. Now for weapons, he's got two of these guns, which seem to be identical. So kind of a weird space cannon. And the blast effect, each of them has one and it comes off. So just pop that off of there. So he's got the two of those. Now, as I mentioned, the guns, let me just pop this out of his hand here. The guns can go on the side of the bike. So I'll bring the bike back over. This gun uh, There we go. I think that's how it works. I had them in there nice before. So yeah, they fit in there okay. And I was going to complain that the flame effects didn't have anywhere to go, but I guess you could probably just leave those on there. I think I had them the other way earlier and I put them in upside down. And in which case, if you put them in like that, then there's nowhere to put the flames. But I guess I must have just had them in upside down originally. So, which is good because I like 
toys where it can hold all of its pieces that it comes with and you don't have to worry about throwing stuff into like a spare parts bin. So it's kind of cool that you could put both guns on the side of the bike. Like so. Yeah, they seem to be different. Anyway, so you can store those there and that's cool. Now he also has another accessory. He's got his flaming chain here. And that's also kind of a translucent plastic that goes from yellow to orange to give it that kind of flame effect. Looks pretty cool. So if you're not familiar with Cosmic Ghost Rider, it's just another take on the classic Ghost Rider. Now I have another Marvel Legends Ghost Rider here. This is more of a classic version. Um, this would be, I guess, the Johnny Blaze version of Ghost Rider, who was the original. He wore this kind of blue, he was a circus performer, so, and this is the outfit he wore while he was like doing stunts for the circus. So that seems to be the outfit that he's got here. Although the use of chains and stuff, that came in more or less with the second Ghost Rider, the one that I'm most attached to, which was Danny Ketch. That was kind of the revamped Ghost Rider of the 90s who had a much, rather than the kind of flaming red motorcycle that he drove, Danny Ketch drove a big black badass motorcycle. And in later years, they seem to have kind of taken the Ghost Rider in the comic books and merged the two. So it's often... Uh, Johnny Blaze wearing more of the outfit that Dan Ketch wears, which is the black leathers and the chains. And he rides more of a bike like Danny Ketch. Anyway, so this this cosmic uh, Ghost Rider, he's from the future. And he's actually neither Johnny Blaze or Danny Ketch. He's the Punisher, Frank Castle. And uh, he appeared in the Thanos series uh, a couple of years ago, like pretty recently, like maybe two, three years ago at most. And uh, he was created by uh, Donnie Cates, who had taken over as the writer of that book. And he was kind of a breakout success of that book. He became really popular. He's gone on to have a couple of other miniseries of his own. He was featured in the Guardians of the Galaxy book, which was also written by Donnie Cates. And yeah, he's just a really fun character because you might not think it from looking at him, but he's, he's really quite funny because the idea is that Frank Castle, the Punisher, has been alive so long because this guy is from the far future and he's completely lost his mind. So he's actually pretty comedic and uh, yeah, it's kind of fun and uh, it's a, it's a cool design. And I was a little skeptical at first when I heard about this character because I am a Ghost Rider fan and I've been a fan of previous versions of updated Ghost Riders they've done. Um, like I collected the Guardians of the Galaxy book uh, back in the nineties and they introduced a Ghost Rider of the year 3000 so he was already kind of a cosmic ghost rider. And then they did, um, probably a lot of comic fans are familiar with Spider-Man 2099, who's a Spider-Man from the future. Well, they did a whole line of books from 2099 and there was a ghost rider 2099. So that's another version of a future ghost rider that I also kind of enjoyed. So I really didn't think we needed another one, but he's just so unique and his design is so cool that, uh, yeah, I didn't mind at all that we got him, and I think it's pretty cool that Hasbro produced him so quickly. Because like I said, he caught on quite quick, and now I already have him in plastic form, which is great. Whereas I would like a Ghost Rider 2099 and a Ghost Rider 3000, but those are likely never to happen. But uh, yeah, this guy, I have him in hand right now, and he's pretty great. So uh, yeah, if you have an opportunity to grab him, I recommend that you do. So next up, I have a couple of Masters of the Universe figures from Super 7. So here they are in their boxes, complete with slip sleeve. So uh, when you order these things, first they come in a brown cardboard box, and then you open it up and you get this thing, and it looks like Castle Grayskull. It's pretty nice packaging. And then you slide the sleeve off, and then you get your first look at the figure. So you see here, I've got Roboto. And... Shadow Weaver. Now, uh, it's been tough holding on to these things because I got them actually uh, probably about two weeks ago. And I've been wanting to tear into them, but now I've kind of gotten into the habit of opening things up on these videos. And 
I was kind of tied up doing other videos for uh, Toy Fair and whatnot. So I didn't have a chance to uh, shoot a video about these things, so I haven't been able to open them. So there you go, some nice cartoon artwork on the back, as well as a little bio for each character. Yeah, so now let's pop these guys open because I'm pretty excited to see them in hand. So here is Shadow Weaver and Roboto outside of the box. So these guys are from the final wave of Club Grayskull figures, which is a subset of the Masters of the Universe Classics line, um, which have been produced by Super 7 from the last number of years. Um, Mattel launched the Masters of the Universe Classics line back in like 2009, and I've been on board collecting it pretty much since the beginning. Um, maybe 2010 I might have started. So yeah, it's been 10 years buying these figures pretty regularly. And uh, Mattel kind of path gave up on the line. They licensed it out to Super 7. Super 7's been making the figures the last few years. But Mattel is planning on relaunching a new toy line of Masters of the Universe in a new scale later this year called Masters of the Universe Origins. So they've taken the license back from Super 7. And so yeah, these are the last wave of figures based on the cartoon that we're ever going to get. Uh, at least for the foreseeable future. Um, now, if you watched my videos regularly, you might have seen my video a couple episodes ago where I reviewed the Masters of the Universe figures from Super 7 that were based on the live-action movie with, like, Dolph Lundgren in it. And those figures actually, um, like, were solicited after these ones, and they were shipping out right around the same time. The thing is... Um, I didn't buy this whole wave of figures. I bought all four of the ones from the movie collection, but there were six in this Filmation collection, and I only bought these two. And so I pre-ordered them, and I've had them sitting in my pile of loot over at Big Bad Toy Store. Um, if you don't shop at Big Bad Toy Store, I recommend you do. Um, but what they allow you to do is when you pre-order something, rather than them ship it out right away, they can you can ask them to hold it for you for a while. And that way you can save on some shipping because you can wait for a couple of things to pile up and they don't ship everything out one at a time. So yeah, I probably would have had these figures before I had those movie figures, but I've had them sitting in my pile of loot for a while. And uh, yeah, I finally got them a couple weeks ago. So yeah, they look pretty great. So both of these figures have been released in the Classics series before. However... Shadow Weaver was originally released by Mattel, and uh, the way Mattel released these figures is rather than do them in full waves, they would release one figure every month, and it was online only. And so every month, on like the 15th of the month, I would go online and I would try and buy the new figure before they sold out. And I bought most of them, but I didn't buy every single one. And the only way you could get Shadow Weaver was if you were somebody that committed to buying the whole year's worth of figures before you even knew what those year's worth of figures were. And that was pretty expensive, especially for me living up here in Canada. Basically, it was like a five to $600 commitment on a bunch of figures you didn't even know what they would be. And if you did that, then you got Shadow Weaver kind of as a bonus. And I did not do that the year they were offering Shadow Weaver as kind of the incentive figure. So I was kind of bummed that I missed out on her because I've never had a figure of her before. Uh, I don't know if they even had ever had a figure of her before. I don't think she was ever done in the vintage line and she wasn't done in the 2000 X line either. So yeah, I think that figure that Mattel produced for the classics was the first ever Shadow Weaver. And uh, yeah, so it was disappointing not to get her. So it's great to finally get her now. It's great that she's gonna be probably the last Master Universe figure I buy for quite some time. Now, as far as articulation goes, you know, she's actually moves pretty well and she feels nice and sturdy. I know some people complain about Super 7's figures not being as good as Mattel's, but I've never, never really had a problem with them. So she moves great. You can see that's a joint there at her waist. So she turns there and turns there at her chest. Multiple joints in her arms. Her head turns. And now she doesn't have any legs, but one of the accessories she came with is this base that you can plug into her here. So that way you give her the illusion of kind of floating around. So that's kind of cool. But I do like the fact that she can stand without it. Like I just had her there a moment ago. And she also comes with uh, two wands. So she's got this one with the green orb that I've displayed her with, but then she's also got this one here with kind of a translucent yellow, not so much of an orb, but more of like a flame effect there. And I think these are from uh, various episodes of the cartoon. 
somebody that's a little more hardcore than I am could probably explain to you the difference from the two different uh, wands. But uh, anyway, it's cool to get a couple options anyway. Now let's take a look at Roboto. So he's one of He-Man's buddies. Now, I never had the vintage Roboto, but this figure is based on that. And the vintage figure had this clear chest with these gears that when you turn, I think there was a lever on his back, um, and you would see all these gears turn, which was pretty cool. Um, these ones don't do that. There's no mechanism to make the gears turn, so that's kind of disappointing. But it's still cool to have this clear chest on him there. It's pretty accurate to the vintage. Um, another thing the vintage had is this uh, red kind of mouthpiece moved up and down. Um, doesn't do that on this one here. It's a solid piece. Um, now, what he has for accessories, just like the vintage figure, is you can pull off his hand like so, and you can replace it with two other swappable parts. So you've got, and I don't want to wrestle with it too much, but you can see he's got like a laser gun hand. And he's also got like an axe, an axe hand. So having three different options for hands, that's pretty cool. And yeah, I love the way this figure looks. Um, Cause this is one of the few Masters of the Universe classics figures. He was a standard release, so there was nothing as complicated to get him as it was for Shadow Weaver, but I just missed out on the classics version. He was one of those figures that he sold out and then they just never really offered him up again. Some of the other figures, they would come back every now and again and they'd allow you another chance to get them. But Roboto, it seemed like it was one and done. So yeah, I never got him. The only version of Roboto I have is the one from the 2000X line, which was great. But I really wanted one to display on my classic shelf because he seems like a pretty important character to me. And uh, now that I've got this one, I, I do love it. I don't mind that he's kind of lacking the detail because he's supposed to look like the, the cartoon. So he's not nearly as detailed as the one we would have got in the classics line. But I actually think I like this one better. Uh, I really like how his, uh, his mouthpiece is displayed here. I'm, I, I don't need it to go up and down. And I actually think it looks really good all sculpted in one piece like that. So yeah, these are some great figures. And uh, yeah, I'm glad I finally have them open and I can play around with them. So this next thing I'm going to show you is kind of a weird one. I don't know how many of you people will actually know what this is. But this is a set of Barbapapas. So the Barbapapas are a family of like, blobs. So that big pink guy in the back, that is Barbapapa. Then the black one beside him is his wife, Barbamama. And then up front you see all of their kids. So that's uh, Barba Bravo, Barba Bright, Barba Zoo. Barba Bo, uh, Barba Lala, Barba Bell, and Barba Lib. So these guys are based on a series of books as well as an animated series. Um, I think it was it was French um, and it began in France. But uh, when I grew up in Ontario um, as a little kid, they used to air the cartoon um, on like Saturday mornings, and I was pretty familiar with it. This family of blobs, they like lived in this little house, which is actually included in the set, which is kind of cool. It's kinda, it kind of looks like a little Flintstone house, and you can see it better from the back. So, uh, yeah, and they went on all kinds of little adventures. I'll be honest, I don't remember hardly any of the specifics about it, but I do just remember it and kind of had a little fondness for, the, for them, just like, you know, you would the Smurfs or something like that. But then in grade three, I moved... Um, kind of across the country out to the East Coast. And I went, moved to Nova Scotia, which is where I still am to this day. But I remember mentioning Barba Papas to somebody once when I moved here and nobody knew what the hell I was talking about. And I tried to explain this cartoon with these blobs. And yeah, it was bizarre that everybody thought I had made it up. And back in those days, there was no internet. I couldn't prove it. Um, and for a long time, I, like, I couldn't find anybody that knew what a Barba Papa was. Um, and it wasn't until I was like in university and could go on the internet and learn a little bit more about them that I could show people like these were the Barba Papas. They're really cool. And, uh, but you could never find any Barba Papa merchandise, certainly not around here. And then, uh, one day in my like twenties, um, I went back to Ontario for a visit and I found some Barba Papa merchandise. I bought this little figurine here of Barba Papa with a little bouquet of flowers. And I bought 
my personal favorite member of the Barba family is Barba Bo. So he's the he's the one furry one who's kind of an artistic soul. You can see he's got a little easel here, and so does this little guy here too. Each Barba each Barba kid kind of had their own little thing. Uh, so yeah, so I had those two little figurines, and that's the only representation of the Barba Pop that I had for a long time. And then. Just oddly, one day I went into my local comic book shop, Strange Adventures, where I buy all my comic books and a lot of my toys, and they had uh, this piggy bank of Barba Bo. So, got this big old piggy bank of him, which I thought was great. It just so happened to be my favorite member of the family. So I brought that to work, and I set it on my desk, and... Again, people came up, picked them up all the time. They're like, what the hell is this thing? And I had to explain it to people. But every now and again, somebody would pick it up and be like, oh, it's a Barbara Papa. And they knew the show. And it really seemed to be about uh, like kind of where you grew up or maybe if you had a French background, you were familiar with these things. Anyway, so pretty cool. I like the Barbara Papas. So just the other day, um, so my wife works in the same office building as I do. Um, she called me at my desk and said, hey, can you come down to my desk? And I was like, yeah, sure. And one of her co-workers, um, you know, so, uh, this woman named Vicky, who I've, I've seen around, but I don't really know her. Um, yeah, Vanessa said, Vicky's got a gift for you. And I said, really? And she pulled this thing out of a bag and said, yeah, I've had this sitting around my, uh, in a drawer at my house for 20 years. You can see here it's dated 2001. And, uh. She's like, yeah, I've been trying to clean up and get rid of some stuff. And I know you had one of these things on your desk at work. So, uh, yeah, I thought maybe you would appreciate it. And I definitely do. I think it's great that now I have a little figurine of each member of the Barba family. And, uh, yeah, I'm kind of dying to open this thing up. But uh, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to. Because the thing is, these things are pretty small. I feel if I open them up. Uh, and put them on a shelf somewhere they're liable to get like knocked over and roll away and you know you might not display them all that great you might not be able to get a good look at them but here they're already displayed pretty nicely in the package you know each character is is showcased you can see the house it's got the grass and the cloudy sky it's colorful and bright so i might just keep this as is put it on a shelf somewhere and yeah i love it so thanks a lot to vicky for uh gifting this to me very unexpectedly and uh yeah the more barba papas the better now here's another oddity that i picked up in the last few weeks so this is an action figure of dwight schrute from the office so you see there's a nice little picture of dwight and then you've got a quote from him there uh, he's got some accessories, so you see he's got the Dwight bobblehead, which he always has on his desk. And he's also got a set of nunchucks, which have kind of fallen out of place here, unfortunately. Um, the box is pretty perfect. Like, you don't, I don't think you need anything too fancy for the office. That would kind of go against the whole aesthetic of the office. So, yeah, the blue with the logo there, nice and simple. I like it a lot. Uh, on the back, there's not much there. It's just an advertisement for the Michael figure, which I have not seen. Um, I got this at my comic store, Strange Adventures. Um, they had Dwight and Pam. Um, I didn't see Michael. Now, you know, he's kind of cool. He's got his mug and he's got his Dundee Award. But uh, I don't necessarily think this looks like Steve Carell. And I don't think Pam really looked like Jenna Fisher. Um, but the Dwight figure, even if it doesn't necessarily look like the actor, at least Dwight has a look. So, like, with the... The mustard shirt and the tie and the glasses and the parted hair like there's no mistaking this like it's clearly Dwight Schrute so that's why I picked this one up and I'm not going to open him up at least I don't think so at least not yet and the reason being is I don't think I'm going to collect this whole series I absolutely love The Office it's probably my favorite all-time show but I'm already collecting the Funko Pops and I've got a pretty good collection of them going already I've got Michael and Andy and Dwight and Jim and Pam and multiple others. And they've just revealed some new ones that are coming out. So finally I'll be able to get Kelly and Stanley and Meredith. So since I've got them in Funko Pop, I really don't think I need action figures of them. Especially ones that are kind of as mediocre 
as this. But I figured I'd get one. I think Dwight is probably the best of any character in the series if you're going to get one of them to kind of represent the office. So I went with this one. I'm just going to pin this one up um, somewhere in this room here. As you'll see, like I like to have a bit of a border uh, around the room. So, yeah, I've got some figures pinned up there. So Dwight's going to find his way up there on the wall somewhere. And, yeah, it's just kind of a fun figure. And, yeah, I don't think I have a whole lot more to say about Dwight. Now, next up, I've got this little Transformer whose name is Dead End. Uh, and he is from the Transformer Cyberverse line, which is kind of more of the kitty line of Transformers. I don't normally buy this stuff. I like more of the collector-oriented lines, like uh, Siege is the current line. Um, but I think I just hadn't bought anything for a couple of days, and it was kind of getting to me. I was at Walmart, uh, and they don't seem to... My local Walmart hardly ever seems to refresh its toys. I'll go in there... You know, sometimes I won't go in for two or three weeks and I'll go back and the pegs have the exact same stuff on them. The empty pegs are in the exact same spot and it just gets a little boring. So I was in there the other day and I saw this guy. It's the first time I'd ever seen him and he was only, he was under 10 bucks and he was just cute. And I almost didn't buy him because I thought I don't really need this. It's not the kind of thing I normally collect. I'm trying to not be so, you know crazy with my money and maybe save it save it when I have it but then I thought you know what for 10 bucks this is the kind of thing it, it made me happy and isn't that what this is all about so I don't know if this dead end is supposed to be related to the dead end that I know from the generation one figures it's like so here's my dead end figure from combiner wars this guy is a member of the stunticon team um, that formed menasaur and so I guess they could be the same like these guys they both turn into uh, sports cars, I guess, by the looks of things here. And they're both red. They both kind of have that orange face. So yeah, I assume maybe this is supposed to be a new version of that guy. Or maybe he's somebody totally unrelated. It doesn't really matter to me. I just bought him because I thought he was cute and he made me happy at the moment. So yeah, let's pop him over and take a better look at him. So here is Dead End outside of the packaging. There's not a whole lot to say about him. He doesn't move much. Um, he's got a kind of kind of a ball jointed socket on his shoulder there, but no moving, no movement at the elbow. Um, he doesn't spin at the wrist. You can see that's all one sculpted piece of plastic. Um, same thing here. This arm doesn't even move the same way this one does, because it looks like it's got some sort of action feature kind of clicks it in place. I'm not, I haven't even looked into it to see what that's all about. As far as the legs go, he's got some movement so he can do some splits. But you can see this guy, like I said, he's pretty cheap. He's made for kids. He's, he's full of hollow parts. There's no uh, joints in the legs or anything like that. Uh, I didn't read the instructions on how to transform him, but if I had to guess, I'd say it's probably pretty basic. But uh, anyway, there he is dead end pretty simple I like them now this next thing is kind of an oddity as well so this is Brie Tai from Robotech and this is the first figure I've ever bought from MEP toys I'm not familiar with them it seems kind of weird to me that they're producing Robotech figures because there's currently at least one other toy company making um, Robotech figures in this scale so it seems kind of weird that the license would be shared but uh, yeah, here he is. And uh, one thing that is kind of exciting is, is I bought this on a Big Bad Toy Store. I saw they had kind of put it up for pre-orders um, maybe a couple of months ago. And I didn't pre-order it because I was, I was kind of curious about what it was going to be like. I kind of wanted, wanted to wait till I heard some reviews on it myself. And people seemed to like it. But uh, yeah, I had no idea until I actually got the box in hand that it looks like they're planning on making the rest of these characters here so we got dolza exidor chiron and most exciting is all is azonia because she never had a figure in the vintage uh robotech line that was kind of like chiron's girlfriend or whatever anyway so that's pretty exciting i'm looking forward to getting all of these guys and uh from what i've seen this looks like to be a quality figure um so yeah let's pop them open and take a look 
Um, just before I do, I guess this is probably a good way to take a look at the accessories. So you see he's got some alternate hands, and then he's got a little teeny version of Rick Hunter in his pilot chair, and some sort of weapon, looks like a staff of some sort. Anyway, we'll take a look at it in a second. So here is Bree Tai outside of the packaging. And I gotta say, he looks great. So really nice sculpting in his face there. You know, these guys are based on a, a cartoon series. So almost like the Masters of the Universe figures. You know, he doesn't have a ton of detail because he's kind of accurate to how he looked on screen in the cartoon. So it is kind of a basic sculpt throughout, but I think it, it looks perfect, essentially. I love it. Now, I've got that uh, like crowbar in his hand. I really don't remember him having a, a stick like that. I'm not sure what it, if it's a weapon or or what it's for. The way the end is kind of uh, is shaped like that. I don't know. It looks almost like it could be a, a recorder or something, uh, like a musical instrument. Anyway. So having this figure in hand, it looks great. It'll make a nice display piece, but it isn't much of an action figure. So his head turns side to side. Um, there's no up or down movement. Now his arms, okay. I wasn't sure at first, but okay. So his arms do go in and out. So that's nice at least. And he bends at the elbow and that's good. And his hands turn and you know, he's obviously got all those multiple hands that you can replace but the problem is he's got no joints whatsoever in his torso or at his waist so he can't spin at all and then even his legs which i love the sculpt on his boots but uh you see there he's just a solid hunk of plastic with these legs coming out so the legs spin like that but uh, they don't bend backwards there's no knee joints so it's almost pointless to have that leg articulation because that doesn't do much for you. So, you know, he's mostly a display piece. Got some movement with his arms. But uh, overall, yeah, I think he looks great. And considering the price, I'm getting so used to spending so much money on action figures. This guy was only like 20 bucks. Um, now, mind you, he, would, he was 20 bucks American. So when you factor in... Uh, you know, the conversion and the shipping, he probably cost me closer to 40, but even still, um, he's pretty cool. Now, if you're not familiar with, uh, Brie Thai, and maybe you're not even familiar with Robotech or any of that stuff, um, I recommend to check it out. I won't get into it too much detail, but it's a, it was a Japanese series. It was called Macross over in Japan. Um, so there's some people that are just big fans of it as Macross. I grew up on it as Robotech. And so what they did there is they took three unrelated Japanese cartoons, one of them being Macross, but because they needed a certain amount of episodes to air it in America, they, t they took two other shows and mashed them together and redubbed them. So it seemed like three generations of, uh, of characters. So it was like the kids battling a different type of alien in the second series. Um, and I totally bought into it as a kid. I had no idea. It seemed like a natural fit. One series would end, they'd defeat the bad guys, and then it would jump ahead in time 20 years, and the, their kids were growing up, and they were fighting aliens. But yeah, really, it was three different shows, and those characters really weren't related at all. But Britai here is a member of the alien race, the Zentradi, and they were a giant race of aliens that were the bad guys in the first generation of Robotech, which was Macross. And the size of the Zentradi to the humans... This is probably pretty accurate. So he comes with a little version of the hero, Rick Hunter. Um, it's kind of weird that Rick's face seems to be completely whited out. He's got no facial features whatsoever. Looks like he might have a visor down, but you think you should still be able to see his mouth or something. Anyway, it's not really important. It's kind of a cute little accessory that they gave him. And it's pretty well done, actually, considering the size of it, because it's really small. But so that's about accurate. The problem is is for them to make toys like this in the 80s, you would have had to build these guys gigantic in order to make these guys playable. Um, so they weren't really to scale at all. Like here's the Brie tie that it, of the 80s from the original line. So you can see, same idea, same design, but not nearly executed as well. This guy is much more simplistic, kind of goofy looking. And the Rick Hunter, uh, was this scale. 
So the old Robotech figures were basically modeled after G.I. Joe's. They had the same kind of elastic waistband. Um, they had removable guns and helmets. So there's Rick Hunter with his removable helmet. And yeah, so he was three and three quarter inches, whereas the Zentradi were like six inch figures. So you see the scale wasn't at all accurate to the cartoon, which was more like this. But, uh, you know, this worked. You could tell they were bigger than the humans, and that was good enough for me. And one thing they did often in the uh, the cartoon, in order to infiltrate the, uh, the humans, so the Jumbo Zentradi here would put themselves through a micronization process, and they trick themselves in, oops, into the scale of humans. And so, yeah, these are all the vintage figures here. So this is just a Zentradi soldier in his fully sized format and then this is him shrunk down to a micronian so yeah pretty cool and i loved robotech as a kid i'm always hoping for like it to get rebooted with a movie or something there's been lots of talk of it over the years but nothing ever seems to happen but the last couple of years we've gotten some pretty cool new figures so this one company started making three and three quarter inch figures of the hero characters such as rick hunter here um but I expected the same company that was making these ones to maybe eventually get around to making these Entrati characters. But now I'm guessing they're not going to, and Mep Toys, a totally different company, is going to be making those Entrati. But it looks like they're they're going to be compatible, similarly to how the old toys were. Um, you know, they're not really to scale because you'll have some three and three quarter inch figures with maybe a five inch figure. But again, you can tell they're taller. I get the idea. I like them. So I'll definitely be buying all the rest of these Entrati figures that Mep Toys produces. What will be interesting if maybe Mep Toys produces their own versions of uh, Rick Hunter and stuff. So that remains to be seen. But uh, yeah, pretty cool. I like them. You'll see here is the three and three quarter inch figure that just came out last year of Rick Hunter from Toynami, along with some of the other figures they've made. So Miria and Max and Roy and Min -Mei. I've got them pinned up to my wall in that border, along with some other uh, vintage Robotech figures that I have carded, as well as some Super 7 uh, vehicle figures in the three and three quarter inch scale as well. So yeah, this is kind of my Robotech corner here, and uh, I'm looking forward to filling it up. I had kind of made the decision to keep these figures carded. The way Britai's box wouldn't really allow for that. Um, so I'm not quite sure how I'm going to display him with these figures, but uh, who knows, maybe since I have to open them up, maybe that'll force me to open these guys up too. So the last thing I have to show you is just a whole bunch of Funko Pops. So the first ones I've got here are from the TV series Mad Men, which wrapped up a couple of years ago, but I was a big fan of the show. So you see here, I've got the main character, Don Draper, as played by John Hamm. Then we got Joan Holloway, as played by Christina Hendricks. And Peggy Olsen is played by, uh, what's her face? Her name's escaping me at the moment. But I did uh, just see her in Invisible Man this weekend, and she was awesome in that. Um, so yeah, if you haven't seen Invisible Man or you're thinking about doing it, uh, yeah, I would say go check it out. Elizabeth Moss, that's her name. And uh, the last one I got is uh, Roger Sterling. So the only one I did not get is... Betty Draper, which is Don Draper's wife. Um, for one, I haven't seen her anywhere, but uh, I don't know why she's not showing up there. But also, one of the main reasons I got these uh, Mad Men figures is because currently on my desk at work, um, I have all of the Office Pops, as well as the Pops from Office Space. Um, you know, I used to have things like Batman and other superheroes on my desk, but I thought it'd be funny since I work in kind of a boring office if I just put boring office figures on my desk. And so when these Mad Men figures were coming out, I thought they'd be, they'd fit in nicely because they're just office workers just in their suits. They got cigarettes, they got rum and Cokes. Uh, yeah. So I think they'll fit in nicely on my desk. So there you go. I got the Mad Men. Next up was actually a Valentine's Day gift from Vanessa. So this is Happy Gilmore and Bob Barker from the uh, scene in uh, Happy Gilmore when him and Bob Barker get into a fight at a golf tournament. And uh, yeah, pretty well done. I'm pretty over Adam Sandler these days, but I loved Happy Gilmore when I was younger. So yeah, this was kind of a, 
a nice little surprise for Valentine's Day. Now I just mentioned the Office Space figures. Now when the Office Space figures came out, I bought the three that you see on the back here, Peter Gibbons, Bill Lumberg, and Milton. I didn't actually buy Joanna, who was played by uh, Jennifer Aniston in the movie. And partly because I wanted these characters to fit onto my desk as office workers, and Joanna worked at a restaurant, and she didn't really fit in with the theme. But uh, anyway, she was on sale for 99 cents. Um, let's tag my slippy. Yeah, so uh, maybe I peeled the discount tag off. But yeah, so normally 15 bucks and discounted to a dollar. So can't pass up that. So now at least I finished my, the rest of my office space collection. Okay. Also on sale for a dollar. Um, so yeah, you can see them here. Marked down to 99 cents. 90 cents actually. So this is Hansel, as played by Owen Wilson from Zoolander. Now, when the Zoolander pops came out, I originally had just got Mugatu, as played by Will Ferrell. And I thought that would be good enough for me. I like Zoolander, and I like all the characters in it. But I try with pops not to go crazy, because I already have over 200 of these damn things. So I try, if I can, like maybe just buy one character from a movie. But there were only three characters in the Zoolander line. So when I got to Hansel for 99 cents, I was like, well, now I have to get Derek Zoolander. So I went out and I bought Derek Zoolander for full price the next day. So now I've got him there too. Next up, I was at a record store the other day and I found Vanya of the Umbrella Academy is played by uh, Ellen Page, who comes from Nova Scotia, where I'm at. Anyway, I've been slowly collecting the Umbrella Academy figures. I've got three of the seven kids so far. So now she's my fourth. So I'll have to keep my eyes peeled for the remaining ones. And going against what I just said a moment ago about trying to only get one character from a certain movie, Batman, I kind of have a collection within a collection of Batman. I buy all kinds of variations of Batman when it comes to Funko Pops. I don't know why, I just like buying them in all the weird little varieties. But initially I actually didn't buy the ones that were based on the movies. I kind of like how the other Batman figures I was collecting all had the exact same base, which was kind of the weird squatty little body. So when these ones started coming out and they had the kind of stylized um, bodies, I didn't really like them. But after a while, I figured what the hell. So I went and got this Batman, which is based on the 1989 movie uh, with Michael Keaton. And lastly, I got my first couple of ad icons. Um, I've always wanted Toucan Sam, but the Ad Icons one I've never seen in stores around here, and they seem to be exclusive to the Funko Pop website, which doesn't ship to Canada. So I've never been able to get any before, but two of them showed up on Big Bad Toy Store recently, so I got the Kool-Aid Man. Not that I'm necessarily a diehard Kool-Aid fan or anything, but who doesn't love the Kool-Aid Man? And uh, I just thought he might be a fun character to kind of use in the little comic strips that I do on Instagram with my action figures. So I'm sure he'll come in handy later. So there's Kool-Aid Man, and then I got Chester Cheetah, because I do love myself some Cheetos. And yeah, Chester Cheetah is a pretty cool dude. So there you go. Those are all my new pops. Um, I figured I'd just show you them all in package at first. Now let's pop them all out and take a quick look at them outside of the packaging. So here is Hansel um, with his like chest tattoo and angel wings. Uh, you know, it's pretty scene specific, but it's it's pretty great version of Hansel. And here is Zoolander. Again, there was kind of so many different outfits they could have chosen for him. Um, this isn't the first one that comes to mind for Derek Zoolander, but I'd say it's pretty clearly identifiable, identifiable as Zoolander, and I think it looks pretty great. Um, so yeah, here's Vanya, or also known as the White Violin from the Umbrella Academy. And this is a pretty nice looking figure. Uh, as I mentioned a second ago, um, she's from Nova Scotia. I've never met Ellen myself but uh, my ex-girlfriend went to high school with her. Um, it's kind of cool. I know a lot of people that do know her. So, uh, you know, she's been doing pretty well for herself for a number of years now, appearing in the X-Men movies and Inception and all that stuff. But uh, this is the first time she made it into an action figure in my collection. So now I know she's really made it. Uh, then we got the Kool-Aid Man. He looks great. Like, I love that kind of translucent plastic with the ice cubes and everything on the top. Looks really good. Chester the Cheetah. That's pretty much the perfect pose for Chester with his arms crossed. He's just chilling there. Looks really good. And you got Bob Barker in his full swing mode there. He's ready to fight. I like the detailing on his, his shirt and everything there. He looks really good. 
Happy Gilmore. So there's Adam Sandler in his Bruins jersey. Um, this one's pretty good. The only thing, and I realize for this specific scene, he probably didn't have his golf club hockey stick or whatever with him. But I feel the figure would kind of be a lot better if he did have a golf club or something with him. But, uh, yeah. Then we've got the Joanne from Office Space with all of the flair, all the various buttons all over her outfit. Um, so that's pretty much perfect for her. Then we've got Batman. So like I said, this is 89 Batman. And the suit seems pretty accurate for 89 Batman. So that looks good. Then move on to the Mad Men. So we'll start with Peggy there in the back. So that is, I believe, from the uh, kind of the last scene of the show when she was kind of walking out with her stuff. And, uh, you know, it's a, I, got, I don't know what look I necessarily would have chosen for Peggy. I think this one's good. But I maybe prefer a little more general. I don't think anything, I don't like these pops to be too scene specific. Um, the other guys are all pretty much perfect. So there's Joan. So I don't know if this figure is super identifiable as Joan. But uh, when displayed with the other Mad Men, I think you, you can tell who she is. And then the Don Draper. I love him with his, his drink there and his cigarette hanging out of his mouth. He looks really good. And lastly, Roger. No cigarette for him, but he's also got a drink on the go, as they always did. And I think he looks really good as well. So there you go. Those are my new pops. This looks like a pretty fun party right here. So that's all the new stuff I've gotten in the past couple of weeks. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please uh, leave them below and I will be sure to get back to you. Um, also, please uh, subscribe to the channel. Hit like if you enjoyed the video. And uh, yeah, I think that's it for now. Um, so until next time, uh, see you later.